What if I told you that if you're trying to sell your home this year, that you do not have to be an experienced interior designer or even hire an expensive stager to get the job done and get your home open house ready. You can do a whole bunch of things for way, way cheap or even for the free 99 to get your home looking just as good as if a professional did it. You wanna know those tips? Just stick around. It's the RT Realtor here, Glenny Johnson. I'm a Birmingham Realtor with Art From Homes, brokered by EXP Realty. And full disclosure, this is, I've been wanting to do this video for a long time because it involves interior design and creativity and a lot of things I love. I love HGTV, I love home design, and I get it honest from my mom. She has a degree in interior design and has been uh, redecorating and rearranging rooms and spaces for friends and family in our home for over the last 20 years. So I get it honest from her. This is my favorite thing to talk about. Um, so yeah, if you are, you know, looking to sell your home in the near future, um, this is something that you can take into account to make sure your home is uh, presentable for your open houses and for your staging. And I know we're this close, this close to seeing not necessarily a bubble burst, like a lot of people predict, but more so of a stabilization of the market right now to where it's not as crazy and chaotic as it's been, but maybe it's starting to slow down just a, just a, this much, just as much. So that tells me at some point we may not always be in a seller's market. And it's gonna be helpful to have these tips on hand so that you know how to, like I said, stay competitive and make sure your home is something that buyers want to see and want to be in. Um, Buying a home is just as an emotional decision as it is a financial or mental decision. A lot of times you're dealing with your first time home homeowners, which is usually young couples with children and they're getting ready to start their life and start their next chapter and purchase their first home. So it's very emotional and you want to appeal to those emotions. And when they walk into your home, you want to say to them, this is the home you want to buy. Okay, so let's get into some tips to help you do that to stage your home like a pro, but for it much cheaper or even for free. All right, little disclaimer. A lot of these tips may come off as common sense or you may be like, duh, when you hear them, but you'd be surprised. So I, I want to do my best and when I explain the tips to describe what it means or what it would look like to execute these things. Because it may you may have a different definition than what I've seen be uh, successful when I say do this or do that. All right, so number one, declutter your home. Okay, declutter means get all the excess items off of your surfaces, off out of your rooms, um, out of your spaces. Completely declutter your home. You should try to maintain at least maybe at, at maximum one to two items in your home. So, example, my kitchen counter downstairs right now. It's got it's got bread on the on the countertop. It's got a coffee machine. It's got a whole bunch of boxes of teas. It's got multiple appliances. It's got a a, a a toaster oven but it also has a toaster it's got a cake display container it's got um, a teapot kettle on the stove it's got two wicker baskets full of snacks and and fresh fruit and all that that good stuff it's got mail on the on the countertops as well this is probably what your countertops look like at home right now clear all of that out and try to get it to maybe one or two you want to completely open that space up take the snack boxes off of the countertop take the mail off of the countertop why do i have a toaster oven and a toaster i don't know but i'm gonna probably take one of them off and put them somewhere to just leave one or two items you want to clear because what that's going to do is showcase the space you have on your countertops if they're full of things even in an organized way even if you have all those things kind of organized and, and, and straightened up and lined up it's still going to make the space look cluttered you want to clear it out completely so that buyers when they come into your house they can see truly how much space you actually have on your on your countertops do this in all of your spaces in your rooms look around extra little knickknack stuff get rid of it you're moving anyway right so clear it out to where you minimally become very minimalist one or two items on all surfaces and in all spaces okay you want to showcase the space Two, depersonalize your home depersonalize what i mean by that is get everything that is unique to you and your family out of the house primarily pictures pictures of you and your family remove them a uh, paraphernalia from your personal life you know activities 
get it out of there. And I know you may think in the back of your mind, well, I want to show, you know, how much we've loved the home and, and see, like, we want buyers to see our family and see how much we enjoy the home. The problem with that is that it doesn't actually give what you think it gives. It, what you want buyers to do is to be able to um, visualize themselves in the home. And if the space is full of things that look like you, it's hard for them to do that. Remember, you are leaving. Buyers don't care about the experience you've had at the house. They like the house already. They would not have come to visit it if they didn't like the house already. So you don't have to do any extra stuff to convince them that they want to buy the house. Again, it's not going to give what you think it gives. It's just going to block their ability to visualize themselves. So pictures, take them out. Take them out. Maybe have maybe some, you know, if you got paintings in your house, yeah, sure, keep that. Keep vases and, and keep, um, you know, cool, you know, a, a coffee table, you know, decorations. Sure, keep it minimal, but sure, keep it there. But depersonalize. You get my point. Remove the personal item, the personal uh, display things, things that are unique to you as an individual, kind of take them out. You want to neutralize the space so that buyers come in, no matter their walk of life, they can see themselves in your home. Okay, number three, paint your walls. Paint your walls. Um, neutralize the space, paint your walls. If you've lived in the house for a little bit of time, you got kids, you probably did something like my parents did and, and got real, real creative with the with your kids' space. If baby girls got a whole pink room full of fuzzy princess, you know, stuff, and, and baby boys got a, you know, blue, greenish room with race cars and, and what have you, you gotta paint those rooms and neutralize the space so that, again, just like we're depersonalizing, because it's a de depersonalizing uh, tip, when buyers come in, they can make those rooms whatever they want to be. Instead of being um, uh, kind of honed in on this being a little girl's room or a little boy's room, they can see it as an office space. They can see it as their mother-in-law suite. They can see it as whatever they want to see it as because you have neutralized the space and painted it a neutral color, white, tan, whatever you want it to be, a neutral color all throughout the house for consistency, okay? Also, I would say consider, even if your walls are neutral, consider touching up in certain spaces where there are nicks and scratches and little kids crayon markers that you hadn't got a chance to clean up yet. Touch up your space and give it a fresh coat of paint. Now, if it's already neutral, you may not have to paint the entire space because that can be expensive if you need to get the paint for that job, but, Give your walls a clean, fresh look and neutralize them so that again, buyers that come in, they can see their home and see the potential that they can put into um, the home if they decide to purchase it. Number four, organize and clear out your closet spaces. Now, you know, just like I know, if you're looking for a home, that's one of the crucial things people are looking for. How much storage space do I have? Especially in those master bedrooms, in those, those closets that are gonna be a shared space between spouses, you wanna clear it out. Now, not a complete clear out. You don't wanna empty it, but you also, you wanna stage it. So keep leave a few clothes behind, organize them in a way so where the space looks clean, and you can kind of show off how much space is actually in the closet you're moving out anyway so go ahead and pack up maybe if it's summertime and you're selling go ahead and take your winter clothes out pack them up and put them somewhere so you just have your summer clothes or a few clothes that you can you know kind of change in and out of throughout this this time frame where you're going to have it stage uh staging open house showing time ready right so you want to show the functionality of the closet space but you also want to make it clear and spacious enough so that again buyers can see what they're working with in that space and the less stuff you have in there the bigger it's gonna look number five and here's a tip that i feel like a lot of people don't actually think about and it's to deep do a deep clean of your home deep clean meaning full on scrub get in crevices clean baseboards you know get a lot of dust all that good stuff do a deep clean um especially in case when you have animals in the house because animals can stink humans can stink humans are gross okay and we live in these houses for years and like the Febreze commercial say they are valid you sometimes become nose blind to the to the smell the signature smell of your home okay so when you do the deep clean get some Clorox in there and clean it up 
okay? Clean your home, then add candles and, um, you know, freshener plugins. Do not underestimate the power of aromatherapy. Because I'm going to tell you one way to completely have the opposite effect is to have the opposite thing. Funk therapy, okay? Quick story time. I went into a house as an agent preview. I, did, I wasn't even having a showing. I do agents, we do previews sometimes where we go into houses on our own to see if there will be possible candidates for the buyers um, to pique our buyer's interest when we're trying to find a home for them to purchase, right? I go into this home. Not only is it cluttered to the max, it's very obvious that there are animals in this house and it hits me right as I walk into the door. Okay, right as I walk in the door, I immediately gave feedback to where I discovered when I gave my feedback about, about the fact that it was super cluttered and it was very obvious there are animals in the home and that it just really needs to be a deep clean done and a, and a freshener of the space. The agent actually thanked me because the agent had been trying to tell these sellers for the longest time in the course of it being on the market that they needed to do this. And my giving feedback as a person on the outside looking in, she said, hopefully this will be the thing that kind of helps them realize this is why we've been on the market for so long because when buyers walk in, that hits them. I literally had buyers within the first 30 seconds of walking to a home walk right back out because what? The smell, okay? No shade, no judgment. Again, we become nose blind and we live in these houses and our skin cell, dead skin cell, sweat, all these things. Sometimes they can get set into the house and we don't realize. A deep clean is essential, okay? Clean those baseboards, okay? Freshen up those sheets, do a new sheet, especially if you got teenagers, okay? Come on now, come on, come on. Those little buggers, they stink. Okay, so their rooms in particular, definitely clean those out, okay? Freshen up the space because like I said, aromatherapy is very powerful and scent gives a lasting memory. I know that the homes that I remember when I go into them, just as an agent, I remember the homes that smelled really good because they gave me a sense that this home was clean, this home was new, this home was well taken care of. It makes me think all those things. So I know it makes the buyers think those things as well, okay? Clean, do a deep clean, okay? Lift up the set in smells that may um, linger from the years you've lived in the house, and especially, especially if you have animals, okay? I know you love them. I, I love animals too, but they stink, okay? Clean your house. That leads me into my next tip. Deep clean your carpets, okay? Like get an actual carpet cleaner in there. Like you can actually get like a, you know, a carpet cleaner that kind of looks like a vacuum. I, I'm literally looking at one across the room here um, in this space. Get a, a carpet cleaner to shampoo your carpets. They change color over time. They hold odors over time. Especially if you're a smoker and you smoke in the house. Oh, please. Shampoo those carpets um, and give them a refresh because they're going to actually help in the refreshing of the, the smell in the space as a whole, okay? Because they hold so much. So shampoo your carpets. Cleaning carpets was uh, number six. So here's number seven. Do a little light landscaping. And I'm not talking about a huge like thousand dollar job, but just a part of things that you would normally do uh, in, in general, which is keeping your grass cut, keeping your hedges trimmed. But in addition to that, maybe go to a little uh, flower nursery and get a couple of colorful potted plants to put strategically around your front area. It makes a world of difference. That pop of color, especially on a sunny day, it's a beautiful sight. I'm gonna reference my mom again. My mom is really good for this. She is a stickler about some potted plants and they really make the space look so manicured and so fresh. In addition to that, she also got bags of like, uh, sand pebbles and puts them around in spaces. She does not spend a lot of money on uh, landscaping in her home. The hedges that are in the front of our house are the hedges that came with the house when we moved in. She just keeps them manicured. She keeps the grass, you know, my dad keeps the grass cut, um, but she adds some colorful potted plants and it makes the space look so phenomenal. Now me, I don't have a green thumb for real like that. She encouraged me to do this a couple of years back on my own home. And those plants, they didn't last for no more than about a couple of months. But yo, 
that's all you need. It's just a couple of months to have a really, really beautiful look. They're not gonna be there forever because once a buyer moves in, they're gonna remove that stuff and put their own thing in anyway. But I'm telling you, for the look, especially when a, when a buyer rolls up, that curb appeal, you can't beat it. Just a little bit of landscaping makes a world of difference. All right, number eight. And this one may feel real obvious or it may not, but start packing early. Start packing early. This will help all of these previous tips to help organize your, your spaces, to help you clean, to help you declutter, to help you depersonalize. Start packing early. You're gonna move anyway. Don't wait until you're under contract to start, move, to start moving out. Start packing early and start putting things in boxes and move them into your garage space. Having them in your garage space is fine. When buyers come in, they know you're moving. So it's all right if your garage space is full of things because you're getting ready to pack and move early. And if you don't have a garage space, consider um, friends or family and in-laws or parents that may have a little extra space for you to hold it there for the time being. Remember, if you got a good agent, their goal is to get your house sold as quickly as possible for the most amount of money, okay? So just to hold you over for either, you know, hopefully, you know, having it presentable for those those first, uh, that first maybe week or two of showings, if you ain't got uh, multiple offers on day one, but you know, for that time being, for showings and for open houses, you know, having someone to kind of hold that stuff there um, until you're able to, to get under contract or hear me out, for that time being, maybe renting a storage unit to hold it there. It's not, the goal is for it to not be there for long, but just until you can, you know, give your good first impressions for these buyers that come in and look at your home and consider putting in an offer. But just clear them out of the living spaces that you really want your buyers to come in and see and see their potential for living there. Start packing early. Check out last week's video that I did on pricing your home correctly okay because all this stuff all these efforts and staging is cute but it don't mean nothing if your house is overpriced you will be a very cute house that sits on the market it can definitely still happen in this seller's market right now you definitely do not want to make all these efforts be in vain so check that out on how to um, be strategic about your pricing so that all of this effort only maximizes that to get you to a closing as quickly as possible okay all of my contact information is in my description box as usual if you have any questions i am happy to answer them but that is all i have for today much love take care and i will talk to you later